talented person in the world, but if you don't work hard, it's not going to translate over. Talent, big guy, um, great hands. So I'm just looking for those guys to, to lead my young boys. Everybody wants to be an LMC ball. I just want to salute everybody for coming down to the gym today. Clap it up because y'all did a hell of a Basketball is a team sport. Basketball is a team sport. Y'all cannot be, it's okay to be competitive, but let me coach. Like Kenny coach, like Kavar coach, let the coaches be the coaches. All right, it's important that y'all play. Y'all don't know more than me. I don't know more than Kenny. I don't know more than Kavar sure. about basketball. I promise you. All this that y'all doing, been there, done. Felt real good today about tryouts. I saw a lot of um, improvement in the returning players. Watch out! Watch out! Watch out! Oh, 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 oh. We've been working on a game over the summer. Um, whether it was with me or somebody else, I could see the work. Um, I was real um, impressed with a lot of new kids coming in. They competed really hard. Um, they came in, some of these kids had a chip on their shoulder. They came in here like they had something to prove and it was real impressive to me. One kid actually said to me like, it was my dream to like come to LMC and play. So that was a, that was like a touching moment for me um, to know that. Like the, the way, from where I started to where I am now is um, what I've done for this program here. So that, that meant a lot to me. Today was a packed house. Uh, we had a lot, a lot of boys wanted, wanted to try out, so it was a little bit more hectic. Uh, there's a lot more. I, I feel, I feel bad for Terrell when it comes to, to this because he deals with a lot more kids and he has to do with a lot more cuts. And when we put that list up, we literally put the. Ah, well, I do this. I put the list up and, and run away because I don't want to see no tears. You know what I mean? I don't, I, I don't like to break no hearts. It's, it's leadership, um, student athlete, skill. Um, and I want overall good people on the team. I want that to like rub off from top to bottom and just have some kids who don't care about how many minutes they get, but just want to be around that family, uh, that family feel. So that's, that's going to be important to me when it comes to my selection process. Um, I'm going to just take my time with that and just look at not less, not more or less positions, but just who fits this culture that I've built that LMC and who right in here and just bring positive energy and positive vibes to, to, the, to the team. Uh, for the girls, it's uh, just learning about the game. Uh, so the first couple practices for the girls would just be, you know, learning kind of how to travel, how to move with the ball, without the ball, um, how to layups, sh uh, form shooting, very basic basket basketball one -on -one, 101. Uh, I even do that with my varsity players, even though they're still advanced. It's always good to polish up, you know, the fundamentals of basketball. So it's very, very fundamental. Um, and I always try to end it with a game so that they can implement everything.
everything they learn uh, within the scrimmage. Somebody I felt like they could help out with the team. And then there's other people that's kind of just here distracting our players. So I was kind of ticked off about that. So I had to kick some people out the gym. Um, we just have way too many, way too many kids to have any extra kids running around distracting our players when we're trying to accomplish something and get something done. So I just had to, you know, I feel bad, but I had to kick them out the gym because we got goals, we got stuff to accomplish. <laughs> A lot of kids haven't played as much as I thought they played, but um, yeah, it felt good to get back out there. It's only our second practice, but it felt good to get out there, get after it, and be competitive. I always try to preach for them to be competitive. Don't get complacent with just making a team. Um, practice is where you um, earn your minutes. I'm coaching two teams at the same time which is, uh, I don't even know how I did it before. I think the teams were smaller before, so it was kind of manageable, manageable, but now it's just like, man, like what I get myself into it? And the level, the skill levels is so, you know what I mean? There's girls that could, you know, make layups and there's girls that don't even know what a triple threat is, and so. All right, that's all right. Get it in the back and put it in the back soft, all right? So when you got a kid like that, you want to applaud them every time they, something even if it's the smallest detail they, they they succeed at something right so like today I was like you know the girls had to make layups and whether they make a miss all they had to do was make sure the ball touched the floor so I'm teaching them how to rebound so you know you got girls that forget they'll make a layup or they'll miss a layup and they'll let the ball touch, touch the floor and I'm like hey that's a sprint but now when they start to get it even if they missing the shot I applaud them every time they you know they do they succeed even a little bit oh look anytime Someone throws the ball high and lazy like that, I'm gonna steal. High and lazy in the air, steal that. And, then, and, and you're way taller than London, take it from her in the air. Take it from her. Hey, hey, basketball, you can be aggressive. You want to reward kids for working hard, but in a, like in the real world, you, you know, somebody has to get cut, and that's the hardest part of it all. But um, everybody can't win, everybody can't be on the team. But um, you never want to make the mistake of cutting a kid who deserved to be on the team. So you kind of like want to look at it from all different angles and, and analyze your team and exactly what it is you're looking for. Ready, ready, ready. Let's go, boys. Let's go. Somebody go to keep going. Keep going. Let's go, boys. And I'm looking for guys who come out and play defense, guys who play together and uh, have, have the same overall goal. So that's kind of like how I break down, you know, my team. Age for a sec, talking like that. Nah, you talk crazy, right? All these kids is wildin'. You should have seen last year. It was the worst. I used to eat then JoJo. Come on. Oh, I'm thinking about working here for free. That charges in my locker. Thank you very much. Our kids want to learn the right way. Right side, lift those knees back up. The power that you have to do it and everything else is 
that I've learned or can be learned, um, you know, in terms of a physical skill set, but can be honed in the mentality that's necessary to not only play in a sport, but to show up to any and every activity. If we can do it mindfully and with all of our intention, that creates a mediocre performer with all the skills to uh, you know, someone who's not as physically skillful, but has the mentality of someone who is, you know, zoomed in, focused, locked in. So AJ, AJ said a lot of the stress got released. And I wish that I knew about nothing when I was your age, because y'all about to go to high school, y'all about to be student athletes, and it's gonna be a little stressful, right? It's when you just came from algebra, there's gonna be a lot of that. So in order to relieve that stress, yoga can help, meditation helps, and I wish I was introduced to that as a kid. Because it was like basketball, school, my parents is expecting this from me, and my teachers expecting this from me. Sometimes sometimes it's gotta take a moment and just breathe, stretch, think about like I'm a, I'm I'm good, I'm alright. You gotta think about stuff like that. That's why we do this. Someone of this age to focus in on the practice is kind of a hit or miss, whereas adults kind of know what they're getting into, um, or at least are more trained in being able to show up to a class that's maybe new for them. But I do find that uh, the body is much, um, it's very fluid to yoga as a child, and so it's kind of almost innate uh, once they learn the proper form of a pose uh, for them to get in it, but it's the mind, power, and the focus that I think um, is the biggest challenge in yoga, and to be able to focus the brain and focus the intention. It was, um, it was signed up, Richard R. Green signed up, and it was like, well, well, we the bulls too, because we started, we started putting bulls all over the, so, I don't know, they just took us, you know, and I'm happy to actually see what the future looks like. I told Jada to come by. She's she made her uh, varsity team in uh, Manhattan Center, uptown in Harlem. She made a varsity team as a freshman, and she was telling me everything that that she had to do to be on the team, all the running and stuff like that. She was like, "I'm a I'm a teddy bear compared to her coach," and I was pretty hard on them. So I what I told her. You gotta listen, you have to come back and speak to my eighth grade girls because they look at me like I'm crazy when I tell them to run 16s or I do all these things. They're like, yo, coach, really? I'm like, listen, y'all get to high school. They gonna make this, y'all not even gonna touch a ball. They're gonna make y'all, they're gonna make y'all run. You know what I'm saying? And that was something I was always prepared when I was in middle school. They made me run a lot. So when I got to high school, I'm like, oh, I know this is gonna happen. And a lot of other people that didn't know, they was like, yo, they were just quitting the team. You gotta help your, you your friend like that. You gotta help your friend like that. <laughs> Actually in the Barclays Center uh, for our home opener December 8th, so that's gonna be big. But um, we're coaching so many different teams, and Kenny coaching both girls teams and we coaching both boys teams. It's kind of hard to try to squeeze everybody into um, this small gym. They want a chip, they ain't get nothing but, but a banner. Like, they need hats to be all out. Dooley on them, we didn't really have much. Mm -hmm. The Dooley on them had the track suit. I know. That was it. I know, we didn't do none of that. But that goes, that's just over the years, man. It's been harder and harder to do those type of things. Our last three practices have just been um, really preparing ourselves uh, mentally for this crowd. Cause, um, been, been playing in the Barclays Center can really overhype itself, especially middle school kids. They um, the moment is real big, so they try to do a lot. They care about sports over here. It's like uh, make do with what you got. We have to just give jerseys out from last year. It's a great opportunity for middle school kids to play on the same court as Kevin Durant, Kyrie Irving, some of the greatest players to ever play. So that's like a big deal. People don't people don't take sports as seriously as, as other people. 
I know, I know how important it is. Sports saved my life. I ain't have basketball, bro. If I ain't have basketball, it's a big deal for me, man. It's a big deal for me. That's even bigger for for me, for the kids, because I'm trying to get my kids seen and I'm trying to build my program. Because um, I, I, I honestly do think I run one of the best middle school programs in the, in the tri-state area. So I really want kids to see um, kids who actually who are in elementary school who are looking for a middle school to choose. I want them to see the great things that we provide here at LMC. And I want this to be a winning culture, you know, family-oriented culture, so I want kids who are coming up to see like, wow, I got this middle school, this is our fifth consecutive year playing in the Barclays Center, so um, it's a big deal for me, man. I get out there, um, I coach, man, I, I teach, and, and more than anything, that family feel, we go there together, we laugh, we joke, and this is all memories that we would never, ever forget. When these kids are in college, they're gonna talk to their, to their uh, parents or when they're grown men, they're gonna talk to their kids and say like, ah, you know, I played in the Barclays Center. This is something that is always gonna be remembered. So for me to just be out there coaching is just a blessing, man. There's some people that never get this opportunity to do this, but uh, I just really do it for the kids who are coming up and, and see this environment and just crave to be a part of it. I want these elementary school kids to see this middle school and know that this is a safe place for them. And this is the middle school, this is the right choice. If you if you're a good person and you're a sports person and um, you come from a sports a sports culture, this is the this is the school for you. This is where you this is where your, your child should be. You know, a lot of our kids that when when basketball season is over, that's when the trouble begins, and that's why we try to you know keep the gym open all summer long, or we try to get a second season. Like we try to do th do do those type of things because man, I, I, like basketball saved my life. I can't stress that enough. I know that's why that's why I do what I do because somebody passed that down on to me. My coaches passed that on, down off to me. I want to keep passing it down, and maybe this the next generation passes it on to the next generation. It keeps going because this the sport, man. It's, I love it. I love it to death. Tompkins was a wake up call, right? They they now see a team that plays hard and they put it they leave it all on the court so they experience that. So I'm I'm hoping today, I'm glad that we set it up for that and now that was like the pregame to the Barclays. So now um, I think they're gonna go out there and play harder, uh, be more focused. It's hard, man. It's hard for middle school girls to stay focused, but I I, I just that's the main thing I push. Stay focused and I think because of that whooping that we took and then today's practice, I think they gotta go out there and play harder, play play very hard. Especially the Barkley Center, there's parents out there. Come to LMC, um, it's no nights off. It's never gonna be just a light day. Um, I'm pushing my, my, my young, my, my boys to be young men to be student athletes, so come to Halloween, you just gotta, you gotta expect things to be um, 
For real, I'm preparing them for high school and hopefully college. Second of all, you want to put on a show for, we sold over 150 tickets. Like, you know, that's for a middle school basketball team with 300 kids in the school. That's a big deal. Big deal, big deal, big deal, big deal. Our seventh graders now, that's going to be playing on JVC and we got A and Eric. Uh, they work extremely, extremely hard. Uh, yeah, the boys are uh, dedicated to the game like I've never really seen before. Uh, they'll get up and show up in the world with the action too. You know, those guys are really, really tough and they really, Want to perfect their game and their craft. They're trying to. They're trying to play on the next level. Defense and not turning the ball. Those are things that we can. We can go. All right. Don't be hard on yourself. Don't be hard on yourself. Just go with the flow. Go with the flow of the game. But you guys got to play defense. You play defense. Let's go. I need everybody to buy it. I'm excited to see how we're going to you know, play against 
against better teams. I felt like I scored a lot and um, I learned a lot of new moves and I did a lot of new moves. I want to see how my freshman kids take to, to the grind and, and, and see if they can keep up. You are our best scorer. I'm not going to say it anymore.
sorry. You're gonna switch now. Now you're gonna have him on the island. But you gotta get this man over. Nothing's changing. We okay, we're gonna win the basketball game, okay? We're fun. level of basketball and one thing we both hate by our biggest but pet peeve is this is just middle school basketball oh yeah we get texts because we holding the ref accountable we hold the people who watching the game accountable we holding ourselves accountable we holding the players accountable if you're watching the game don't say nasty things to the players and if you're a ref don't come in here for a paycheck yeah i heard um don't and and I don't picture. like to, I don't want to bash refs. No, but we, like go, but we going to talk about it. But we going to talk about it, we're right? About it. This is, new, <laughs> we're not coming in here for a paycheck. <laughs> These kids are preparing themselves to go on and play high school. Mm -hmm. So at the same time, they need to learn the rules because what happens is when these kids go other places to play, they're picking up bad habits. Yes. And then they come to me and they're saying, coach, but this ref let me hit this kid or they let me yep, walk, take happens. four steps instead yep, of. That happens. Yep, that happens. I don't know what's happening on. What, what, what other people plans are, but at LMC, people have plans to go play high school basketball. Uh, we have Blair Thompson, who's at the University of Columbia right now. Uh, you know, he had every offer you probably could think of. Yep. We want our kids to be held accountable and play the right way, so we want to hold refs accountable. And refs do a salute. Every ref that's doing a great
job. Salute the refs that's learning, but at the same time, don't collect the check. Don't collect the check. Be here because I had a ref. I had a ref say to me, uh, I was, I was, the game was getting kind of wild. There's a lot of fouling going on, and I said to the ref, Yeah, well, like, come on now, like, what's going on? Like, you know, I'm, 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 I'm saying it calmer than I, than I said it, but I was like, What's going on here? And he looked me in my face and said. Isn't this, isn't this just girls basketball? Is this just girls middle school basketball? And that get like, I, I already have a chip on my shoulder. I already feel like I've been overlooked. I already have a chip on my shoulder. And especially when I coach girls, cause they don't take it serious. You know, I was like, oh, I'm just gonna let them foul. No, I in practice, I taught my girls how not to foul. So if, if they go into a game and the other team is fouling, now I look crazy. Hey coach, I thought that was a foul. It is. You know what I'm saying? And the ref is not doing his job. And so another thing I actually implement in my practices, like I might make a bunch of bad calls because I'm like, this is gonna happen. This is, we gotta get used to this. You know, we can't be like, ah, oh, and, and be upset about it. So in practice, I'll make a bunch of bad calls. I'll let, you know, just, just to, not all the time, but just to, you know, when they're scrimmaging and I'm like, all right, that's, that might happen in the game. We gotta get used to that, gotta get over that. still so many things that we can improve on so I just want them to um, kind of visualize it like see it rather than me keep preaching it I want them to see it and um, as long as we stay sharp over the break I don't expect kids to come back 100% um, polished because I know it's Christmas and I want them to enjoy that but at the same time I want them to know that like the season's not over this is a break but at the same time we got to put that work in <laughs> Your face? Yes. Your face? Then your hands? Yeah, you don't want to hurt your face. Yeah, but you'd rather have your arms be hurt than your face. Oh, yeah, I'm going to be playing basketball. Are you okay on the face? Glad to see them come together and come practice and work out together. That's that's gonna be a dangerous, dangerous duo for us this season. Uh oh. Uh oh. Yeah. 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 Yeah.
is such a big thing. It's like what Isaiah Thomas said, like, it's like, what is what does it take to be successful? It has nothing to do with basketball. It has everything to do with everything else. You know, wanted to, wanted to play hard for us. You know, how hard, they see how hard we go for them outside of the court. So they're like, all right, at least we could go hard for eight minutes a quarter. You know what I'm saying? That's at least we could do. You know what I'm saying? So that's, I feel like that's why our players always play so hard for us. Because we're that family. Like, like Tyrell said, you're not going to go, you're going to go hard for your family. You're going to go harder for your family than anybody else. Let's see the game without the ball. Stop, 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 stop. Uh, my eighth grade girl's been with me for the longest, so they already know how I give it up. So I don't have to say much to them. But yeah, these girls have been around me for a long, long time, all summer. So I can't wait to just get the ball rolling. I can't wait. myself because I made adjustments I was trying to get girls in there that you know I'm trying to get them to learn the game and maybe that wasn't the right time and the girls came back and we only won the game by three but we should have won by 11 or more so last week we were missing Samara our star player you know our bucket getter we was missing her she had she was out with the flu so uh our seventh grader he, he did had to step up and you know that's a role that she doesn't usually play she usually Distributing, giving the ball and passing, and getting assists. But uh, against Tompkins, she had a score. She ended up with seven points, um, half the team points, and we, we ended up losing by two. Um, from a very that that team is tough. They got a tough guard over there. There's another seventh grade girl that hit a tough three down the stretch. And you know, I'm not. I wasn't too mad about that loss because we were missing Samara and we was you know we didn't we didn't have full power, but. Um, he, he held it down. So we work extremely hard in the off season and on weekends to, to be good and compete. We come from a school with 350 kids. We going up against schools who have a thousand, three thousand kids. They get a lot more to choose from, and that's just a a stat. That's just a fact. That's the, 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 statistically, that's just the way it is, right? So we need to find a way to get ahead of the curve. And the way we do that is, you know, work out. And I want my players to be better in the classroom. I want my players to be better teammates, better leaders, and better, better basketball players. So for my, my goal for this year is to, to, of course, win an MSAO championship, but to do those four things. 
be a better teammate, a better student, a better leader, and a better basketball player. Those bands off.
I mean, big man, bro. I'm about to slap him. Four minutes, bro. Bro, let's go. You know what, 26 minutes. You got your phone on you, bro? Yeah. I'm going to text you the cash. I'm going to text you the cash. Oh, okay. Go, bro. Go, three minutes, bro. These girls are trying, I'm trying to get these girls to go from middle school basketball to high school basketball. And whatever happens after that, happens. But my job is to make sure they make their high school basketball team. So if you're a ref and you don't, and you're like, ah, oh, it's just girls, you shouldn't be refing. That's just how I feel. So this ref was allowing a lot of things to happen. And I was trying to make it about the ref. But I knew as soon as he walked in the building that he wasn't going to make no foul calls. Girls could whack each other. He's going to do the bare minimum, collect the check, and get up out of here. And I don't usually bash refs because it's not my thing. But there's certain refs that I just don't respect because they don't have respect for my girls. And that's just, that's just how I feel. Our kids play outside of school for other teams. So now with girls, they let girls do three seconds. They let girls not slide their feet, just swing their hands. Now when they go play for the AAU team outside of school, Amira's coming back saying, I'm not learning anything playing here because I'm picking up bad habits. I don't want to bash refs too much, but if you have a new ref, they don't do NBA playoff games. If you have a new ref, they don't do March Madness. If you have a new ref, they don't do high school playoffs, high school powerhouse team like Stepanek, Christ the King, Bishop Lachlan. Those refs don't get those games. Now let's go down to middle school. When you have a, a school like LMC, like Dock Street, like Wagner, those new refs can't get those games. No. Because we don't teach kids to go out there and just run up and down the court. I almost, I almost had to leave. Like, I had to yeah, so take a second, bro. Tristan, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> and, 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 and Tristan was like, yo, what's going on? I said, yo, he fell like, on the floor. I was like, I was like, all right. Hey, what the f is the ball? Because she was like, yo, you ain't going to fire. We wrestling? Martin was up one. With like four seconds left, I drew a play, a stack play. We ended up getting the ball um, baseline. I drew a stack play. Samara ended up getting the ball, uh, attempted a layup. She got fouled. Uh, one, uh, we down one, four seconds left, like I said. She gets on the line. She misses the first one. And I'm like, all right, Samara's going to make the second one. Like, so we go into overtime. Uh, e ended up actually getting fouled out. So she's out the game, and she's bugging out on the, on the side, like, uh, like, you know. She's mad that she got fouled out, and she's mad that she can't help her team. And she's also worried that she's about to lose the game, so she's like, oh. I'm like, don't worry, Samara's gonna hit one free throw. Like, she's gonna make one. She ended up missing it. Uh, luckily for us, uh, the Morton girls that were on top of the, the line didn't box out the shooter. Samara gets the rebound, lays it up, game over. <laughs>
rallies and all that was a big thing. Everybody was involved. Everybody and their mama was in the gym. Senior night, we tried to make it a little bit more special. But even that felt like a regular game. I'm not going to say we don't got any type of support because there are people that come and support us every time we play. But it's getting tired. The lack of support, it, it kind of weighs on you after a while. I just want people to know, like, when you see stuff from LMC, that's, that's Tyrell. That's Kenny, that's, that's... To the back, Cancel a game. A game is at four o'clock. You cancel a game at three. No smoke, duck. We we with everything. Anybody that want to play LMC, I like me. I like Kenny. Come on, bro. Come on. And stop being scared to schedule games. <laughs> uh, we not like these other schools who you know pick and choose who they want to schedule. We don't duck smoke. Look at me in my eyes. You see my soul. We ain't scared of nothing. You know who I'm talking to. <laughs> Again, no matter how the bracket come out. Coach Kenny is whatever. We not scared of any school. Any school. However it shape out, my boys and our girls is we ready to play. That going into the playoffs, the atmosphere is gonna be crazy. There's gonna be a lot going on in your head. I'm gonna be, I'm gonna be telling y'all stuff. You're gonna be hearing stuff from the crowd. You're gonna hear parents. Yeah, it's gonna be a lot. When we score, we press. No hard five and no nothing. Get back on deep. I 
after the game, after the game, you say sorry, good game. That's basketball. Somebody came through. Somebody came through, man. That's it. That's it. Somebody came through. Billy, man. Uh, 
like if I played and I said no and he like kind of introduced me to basketball more and like said I should like try out and I gave it a shot like I already knew him and like Tyrell so it helped even more I would get mad most of the time and they would like never give up on me like they would still like push me to my limit I'm gonna try playing basketball in high school um, they made me want to um, do more and it was like more than basketball it was like learning how to control my anger and like my emotions and I appreciate Tyrell for all the support during the games and giving me hugs and like it made me comforting and like made me feel like I had something to win for. Well, some hour for us in eighth grade. Kenny, we worked in the summer a whole bunch. I do a whole lot, got way better. And then this season, um, I always loved playing basketball and then I came to LMC. I, I didn't really know how to play. I knew I knew like the basics, but uh, Kenny started teaching us. And I went to Saturday practice. I got to grow a bond with my player, or my teammates, on and off the court. Thank you, Kenny and Tyrell. They helped me a lot. Uh, I wouldn't be as good as I am right now if it wasn't for them. So I'm very thankful and grateful that I had them as my coaches.
JV boys want a chip. Uh, since then, since the end of the season, we've just been practicing Tuesdays and Thursdays. Um, you know, we've been doing small practices and then big, big practices. Uh, I'm trying to get my eighth graders prepared for high school ball, and then uh, I'm trying to get my sixth and seventh graders ready for uh, next season. I'm coming out to Samara. Um, you know, I, I, I single her out because. Every time the gym's open, she's there, she's ready to work. So um, I pray to God that this all pays off for her. And not talking basketball, I'm talking about just getting to school on time and, and changing her life, man. And using basketball, this little round object can take you so many places, man. Just using basketball as a tool. I'm not worried about the uh, car mine's work, I think. I know by the time next season comes, they be good. Gavin Solano, uh, you're a wonderful kid, man. And, and your talent is unmatched. You'll learn when to shoot. You'll learn when to pass. Um, most people think you're uncoachable. No, you're just emotional and you just a kid trying to figure it out, man. Your talent is unmatched. You was the leader of the, uh, of the ship, man. And you went as far as we, you know, as we, we went as far as you took us, man. You, you know, I still think about you ripping your jersey at that Baruch game and the tears running down your eyes, man, because that was me when I was growing up, man. Our uh, varsity girls, man, I couldn't be more proud of y'all. You know, I know most of y'all, I, I take a bunch of girls that's learned how to play basketball, and I'm, I'm kind of sick and competitive, and so they adapt that, and they have to deal with me, and they kind of look at me crazy sometimes, but I, I, I appreciate them for just taking all that in and growing as basketball players. I know it's a, it's a struggle sometimes, it's a little back and forth. I, they annoy me, and I know I sometimes annoy them. And Big Mo, man, shout out to Maury, Maury Cabo. Um, he walked in here as a, um, a, a big giant kid who didn't know anything about basketball, couldn't catch the basketball, couldn't make a layup, to one of the most dominant forces in middle school. Um, I still got people asking for your social certificate, for your uh, birth certificate, man. Who is that kid? Who father is that? Who we coming to? Got people coming here asking for your birth certificate, man. So, Maury, you made an, a, a, a remarkable um, impact on, on LMC, and the progress you made is unmatched. My JV girls, man, I'm, I'm excited for y'all to come back. 
I'm excited for next season. Um, this season, I see, I've seen a lot. I've seen a lot. Uh, I've seen a lot that I could work with. Um, I'm excited for Carmine, E, London, Savannah, um, Phoebe. I'm excited for all of them to play on the team next year. Um, I apologize if I'm missing anybody. Darius Tollison, you have great talent, man. And, and the, the minute you can put, you can apply your smarts to the books and to basketball, it'll all pay off for you, man. One day at a time, D. Um, you've, got, you've got a great talent, kid, and, and, and be yourself. If I can give you any advice, I'll always tell you to be yourself, man. Basketball don't have to be everything, man. You got talents in other places, but you gotta just apply yourself to the schoolwork and basketball and whatever else you wanna do in life will come along. You know, he is, he is super tough coming in. I think she could be the best player in the league. Um, and then you got London who's growing. You got Carmine who could be just right under E or just as good as E if she just stopped being lazy. It's just the little things we gotta do and then I think we're gonna be good, man. We got all summer, we got the rest of the school years, Tuesdays, Thursdays, and Saturdays. I think we'll be all right, I think we'll be all right. Thank you, Chase, man. You came every day, whether you was gonna play 100 minutes or one minute. Um, you gave everything, you never missed a practice. practice. Um, shout out to your remarkable father, Brian, man. You, you one of a kind, man, you supported us. Having two kids on, a kid on JV and a kid on Varsity, he was around all the time. Everything we needed, he was there. He was raising wonderful kids. Shout out to Brian Dolphin, Chase Dolphin, Cruz Dolphin. Dante, same thing, you applied yourself. Didn't care how much you played, you was in it for the team. Tristan Brown, you got in there, you was fearless. You had fun voting, man. You came to every game voting, man. You never played on the basketball team. You never even played basketball, so I want to salute you for having the courage to go play at a school like LMC where we got hundreds of banners hanging up from basketball. So that's a scary thing and you did it. So um, I just want to salute all my eighth graders. I love you all and I wish you all the best of luck. Kind of games to show the kids that like I'm actually like living what I'm teaching them. So because sometimes it's good to get out there and um, lace them up and really show the kids like I can really do this. Sometimes I think they get that confused. They think I tell them to do things that I can't do. So sometimes I think visual is better than verbal. So I like to get out there and you know, show them how to do. really wanted them to win. And so I apologize, they was a little upset with me, you know, I had a full court press. I'm impressed with the staff. Yeah, I wanted to win. I was in coach mode. I have a friend Ford, my son is Abraham Ford. Um, he's the third of my sons to go to LMC and the second to play basketball for Tyrell and Kenny. So I feel so lucky that um, he's had this experience. And I try to be at every game. It's so much fun. It's such a supportive community, let alone that um, my kids are learning more from Tyrell. down the hallway and like I heard one of the kids um Cruz he said coach you know I never lost a game since I've been here I'm like it ain't really hit me until like I went to the office I sat down I'm like wow like Abraham Cruz Teo Eric Charlie forgive me if I'm leaving anybody out they didn't lose, they never lost a game like that's amazing to me man and that's, that has nothing to do with me and everything to do with them. I just pr provide a safe space, um, give them everything I got, and, and they're willing to take it in. Every time the gym is open, they're there, um, ready to work, and um, it all paid off, man. It all paid off. Having the second undefeated season back-to-back -back, um, and winning a championship, man, 
not too many people could say they was a part of that. And um, I'm glad I'm, I'm glad my boys was able to make history. You know, they could never take that away from them. Times it's always like this is the final times I'm gonna see these kids in the school building, you know, playing with Gab and all. They were suffering a lot today, but that's always that's every year, you know, they always think they're gonna win. So I love their confidence, man. I love, you know, their, their competitiveness, but I'm gonna miss those guys for real, even the girls. I'm gonna miss them, like, you know, thinking about what the school year is gonna look like next year without them is like it's kind of weird, <laughs> you know what I mean? It, and it never, I never get used to it, it happens every year. And I never get used to it. I'm like, damn, man. Man, I'm kind of scared, bro. <laughs> what the heck? I came in, they were stretching. They looking like a team. I'm scared. It was a bittersweet moment. I wanted to kill them, but at the same time, it's like, like it really set in. That that's the, that's you know, it make me emotional. It's the last time I'm gonna see my boys in the LMC uniform. I gotta, I gotta apologize. I gotta apologize. I ain't gonna just walk in with my fault. I gotta apologize. <laughs> oh God, <sorry. laughs> I gotta. A miracle happened and I ran into Tyrell who was um, my student since he was in kindergarten and we reconnected after not having seen each other for almost 10 years and he told me that he worked here and I was like, it's our first choice. We were so happy to be coming and now, you know, karma can be a wonderful thing. I used to care of Tyrell when he was younger and now he takes care of my children and we take care of each other. Listen man, y'all in trouble. I don't know. I don't know. They ain't want to play us. They ain't want to play with us. Like this year, they, all the stuff that we went through this year with basketball, y'all in trouble, man. LMC on three, baby on six. One, two, three. Five, six.